Shalom, brothers and sisters. So now we are going to spend some time looking at the eclipses and what they mean to us. Signs in the heavens. We are going to be looking at the biblical view and have a short discussion on that. We're going to look at solar and lunar eclipses. We're going to look at the 21 August 2017 Great American Eclipse. We're going to look at the 14 October 2023 Eclipse. And then eventually we're going to look at the 8 April 2024 Eclipse. And we'll touch on various things with regards to all of these. And I will leave you to make up your mind with, is this a sign? Is this not a sign? But ultimately, what we are all looking for at this channel and all around the world as more and more believers wake up, is to be sitting around this table very, very soon. Biblical view. In Genesis 1 verse 14, the Lord says, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. Four things here. Signs, seasons, days, and years. Signs is the number one reason for these lights in the firmament of the heavens. And he has been using them since Genesis all the way through to the very end in Revelation. He is not saving them just for Revelation. Now why am I saying that? Luke 21 verse 25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. And on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Now, I've many times explained on this channel, we are seeing the precursors, the beginning, the shadow of the tribulation cast over the world right now as it nears us at breakneck speed. We are seeing the trailer of what is lying ahead. We are seeing signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars showing us the times we're living in. We're seeing on earth distress of nations with perplexity like we've never seen. We're seeing the sea and the waves roaring, storms, earthquakes in diverse places. All these things, a premonition, a sign, a shadow, a trailer, a preview of what lies ahead in the final week. And then... Matthew 24, verse 29 to 30. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. This is when he returns at the end of the final week with his bride coming with him. Joel 2 verse 31 speaks of the same thing. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Revelation 6 verse 12 to 13, I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red and the stars in the sky fell to earth as figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. God is not just creating the sun and the moon and the stars in, in the firmament of heaven for signs only for revelation in the final tribulation week. It has been used as signs throughout the time of man and it's picking up more and more the closer we get and we're going to be looking at one or two examples of that as we go forward. So are these important in my opinion? Absolutely. And I could turn this into a two-hour video talking about blood moon tetrads and the fact that they always seem to perfectly line up with Jewish feasts, the feasts of the Lord. 
How is that even possible? And great upheaval in nations and financial institutions and great things that happen afterwards. All of these things linked together, they must be exactly what God said they are. They are for signs. So solar and lunar eclipses. Now if we dig into the Hebrew a little bit further, even further than just biblical sources, and we go ahead and we look at the Talmud, for example, Sukkah 29a, the sages taught in another Baraita, when the sun is eclipsed, it is a bad omen for the other nations. When the moon is eclipsed, it is a bad omen for the enemies of the Jewish people. This is due to the fact that the Jewish people calculate their calendar primarily based on the moon, and the other nations calculate based on the sun. When the sun is eclipsed in the east, it is a bad omen for the residents of the lands of the east. When it is eclipsed in the west, it is a bad omen for the residents of the land of the west. When it is eclipsed in the middle of the sky, it is a bad omen for the entire world. Now again, this is not biblical, absolutely. This comes from their traditional and extra biblical writings, but it shows you their understanding of solar and lunar eclipses. The Inca considered solar eclipses a sign that their god Inti was angry and a human sacrifice was called for. Babylonian kings considered eclipses, especially lunar, a very deadly omen and learned to predict them. Vikings would make a ruckus to frighten the giant wolves Skull and Hati, eaters of the sun and moon, and stop Ragnarok, the end of days. Chinese banged drums and yelled to drive off an invisible dragon as a try to eat the sun. Interesting. The Assyrian Eclipse. The pass of the Bur Sagale Eclipse went over Nineveh on June 15, 763 BC. This Assyrian Eclipse is recorded in Assyrian eponym lists that likely dates to the 10th year of the reign of King Ashurdan III. Some believe it occurred at the same time Jonah was in Nineveh, warning the population that the city would be destroyed. This eclipse occurred over Nineveh in the middle of the reign of Jeroboam II, who ruled Israel from 786 to 746 BC, according to 2 Kings 14, verse 25. This was the exact time when the prophet Jonah lived and prophesied during his reign. Now the Assyrian Empire at this time was in a state of chaos, struggling with revolts, famine, and two separate outbreaks of plague. They believed eclipses were omen, omens of imminent destruction. Now does it not sound like what the world is struggling with now, especially America? Revolts, famine, outbreaks of plague. Then suddenly, a massive fish vomits up a man covered in seaweed and stomach acid who gets up and walks through the city prophesying their destruction. Thus their dramatic repentance after hearing the warning, running at the same time as signs in the heavens. Now there's some Nineveh connections. Jonah 3 verse 3 to 4 says, Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days journey across. According to studies that could be broken down to 20 miles travel per day, so 60 miles in total. 60 reminds us of six days for man and one days of rest. It's that six that jumps out there. Archaeological digs reveal an area of 2,000 acres, which reminds us of the 2,000-year wait between Christ's first and second coming. Again, this is just connections I'm pulling through with numbers. It's not biblical fact or proof I'm saying what I'm seeing in these numbers that jump out at me 
which could be really exciting connections. Nineveh was the chief city of the Assyrians, and America currently is the chief country of the West, whether people admit it or not. That's a fact. Jonah 4.11 speaks of the city having 120,000 persons, which reminds me of the 120 years given to man in the days of Noah and the 120 jubilees from creation, which gives you 6,000 years. In 21 August 2017, we experienced the Great American Eclipse. This is a picture of what it looked like, one of the nicer photos taken of the Great American Eclipse in 2017. So it was between 67 and 70 miles wide at the widest. It took place in the month of Elul, which represents repentance. It took place 30 days before Rosh Hashanah. After this eclipse, we saw what looked like the Revelation 12 sign in the heavens on 23 September 2017. It traced a path exclusively across the United States, a phenomena which had not occurred since before the nation's founding in 1776. It occurred on the same day that Jared Kushner arrived in Jerusalem to begin work on a peace plan. It crossed over the New Madrid fault line in America, the most worrisome fault line. It crossed over seven places named Salem, Peace, Jerusalem. Yerushalayim. It went over Salem, Oregon, Salem, Idaho, Salem, Wyoming. Salem, Nebraska, Salem, Missouri, Salem, Kentucky, and Salem, South Carolina. What are the odds? What a coincidence. Salem, short for Jerusalem. The maximum level of the eclipse coverage was over Washington, D.C. at 2.42 p.m., about 81%. UN Resolution 242 calls for Israel to give up land for an Arab state that is Judea, Samaria, and East Jerusalem. This is the foundation of their peace talks. This eclipse, in a similar fashion, divided America as they would divide Israel. The National Eclipse blog said that from Oregon to South Carolina, the eclipse would trace a 67-mile-wide path across the country, dividing it. In 1967, Israel regained control of the eastern half of Jerusalem, as well as the Gaza Strip, West Bank, and Golan Heights, including Sinai Peninsula, which they returned. These are the areas that the world wants Israel to give up in dividing the land for peace. On the 14th of October 2023, the second big one to watch for occurred. Also known as the Ring of Fire Eclipse. It took place seven days after the Jewish fall holidays. It's also known as the Wedding Ring Eclipse. It occurred in a sabbatical year. This points us towards the great wedding of the bride to the bridegroom that we especially are all eagerly waiting for. Where it met the 2017 eclipse pass, it passes over Mount Jefferson, Mount Hood, Crater Lake and some of the worst volcanoes in the United States. It's crossed over the only place in America called Corpus Christi, Body of Christ. It crossed over Roswell, New Mexico, one of the most famous alien crash sites in the whole alien history that's been disclosed and discussed right now, part of the Nephilim demonic agenda that is unfolding with 
mankind's great plans for the final week. That brings us to the final one on the 8th of April, 2024, just days away from now. It will be 120 miles wide at its widest point. It will take place on the Hebrew month Adar 2, 5784. It occurs during Israel's 70th Jubilee, release from bondage. It will be the most viewed astronomical event in all U.S. history. It occurs 70 days before Pentecost, the harvest festival associated with the church. It occurs in the year after a sabbatical year, a time of weddings. The eclipse occurs as Israel fights its first major war in 50 years, a jubilee span. This war is 50 years after the Yom Kippur War, their last massive war, again a jubilee number. It completes a giant X, an Aleph Taf signature over America, denoting completion. The Aleph symbol is associated with the bull, and the same time the comet resembling a bull crosses the skies. Coincidence? Nisan 1, the day God says is the first of the first month, begins the next day after the eclipse, or by some reckoning, on the same day in the evening. It was the beginning of the Jews' redemption from Egypt, an escape from slavery. It occurs seven years after the great American eclipse. Seven years. The 2017 and 2024 eclipses pass over places named Salem, again, Jerusalem. It occurs when the grapevines flower in Israel. This is usually in the second week of April. The tender vines form flowers and give off an intoxicating fragrance. Song of Songs speaks of this as a sign we can link to the rapture. Song 2 verse 13. The 2017 and 2024 eclipses are identical to the Missouri Gravity Low Crack and New Madrid fault line. The crack seen in blue on the right intersects the New Madrid fault line represented in black. And what's interesting is it's exactly the same as the 2017 and 2024 eclipse connections. It will take place under the constellation Cetus, which is the whale or sea monster. The eclipse occurs days before two jubilee-themed asteroids enter Virgo, 50 Virginia and 652 Jubilatrix. The eclipse occurs in Pisces on the band that binds the fish toward Aquarius, the water bearer, which symbolizes Jesus. A week later, the sun crosses the band that binds the fish, pointed towards Andromeda, the chained woman. The sun is found at this location for only one day each year, and in 2024, this day coincides with the new moon that marks the beginning of Nisan and redemption. It will be flanked on either side by the two planets that symbolize Jesus. On the left, the king planet Jupiter will be in the constellation Aries, the Lamb. On the right, the bright morning star that represents the coming of the Lord will be dazzling in Pisces, the Jubilee constellation. It is striking that during the eclipse, these two largest and brightest planets that represent Jesus will be visible on either side of the darkened solar disk. Please go and look into TW Tram's in-depth research and findings on this and more with regards to the Lord's return. He's got amazing stuff that he really delves into deeply. His website is The Season of Return, and you'll find him on Facebook as well under TW Tram. It's worth going to visit. 
The world calls Comet Pons Brooks the Devil Comet due to its horns. The comet will be visible in the constellation of the Lamb during the eclipse. It has the ability to produce unexpected outbursts of brightness, just like Jesus said he will destroy the wicked with the brightness of his coming. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 8. The outbursts produce what look like horns of a bull. It will be in perihelion max brightness as it enters the Taurus constellation. After that, it will enter the constellation Eridanus, a name that means the river of the judge. How coincidental is that? Right before the week of judgment, a time that will never be seen again in the history of man and never has been before. All of this will be visible at the same time as the eclipse. The 2024 eclipse passes over seven Ninevehs in the USA. Nineveh, Texas, Nineveh, Missouri, Nineveh, Indiana, Nineveh, Ohio, Nineveh, Pennsylvania, Nineveh, Virginia, Nineveh, New York. And yes, it's true that only two will be in direct path, but that alone is already astounding. On the right, you can see all the Ninevehs close to and in the eclipse path. The 2024 eclipse will pass over seven Salems again. Salem, Arkansas, Salem, Illinois, Salem, Kentucky, Salem, Ohio, and three Salems in Texas. It will also pass over Nineveh, Nova Scotia, Canada, Jonah, Texas, Rapture, Harmony in Indiana, Temple, Texas. I mean, the name Temple at a time when they're all pushing to build the temple. The Ark Encounter in Kentucky, over the same place in Texas where the red heifers came from that are now in Israel and almost ready to be sacrificed. The Tav formed by the American 2017 and 2024 eclipses on the left. The Apex will be over the area known as Little Egypt, Illinois. It lies just south of the major highways I-70 and US-50. Egypt, 70 and 50 are synonymous with redemption in the word of God. Some final points. And again, we could carry on for ages, but I'm just pulling the most important ones here for you. It is six months after the 7 October Hamas al-Aqsa flood attack on Israel. Seven days after that attack, on 14 October, there was a rare annular solar eclipse. State lawmakers have earmarked $1 million for emergency response costs connected to the eclipse. Texas County has issued a disaster declaration for the solar eclipse already. More will probably follow. There is a seven-year gap between the 2017 and 2024 eclipse. Together, they form an X near the New Madrid fault line, which is six times larger than the San Andreas fault zone that we all know so well. On that day, seven planets in our solar system will line up in the sky in a procession which is extremely rare. Seven, 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 everywhere. On that day, the sun moon and other planets in our solar system will appear to form a straight line in the sky when looking from Jerusalem towards the east. The April 8 eclipse will be the last one visible from the United States until August 23, 2044. Delta Flight 1218 is offering solar eclipse flight tickets, probably sold out by now. Strong's 1218, Demos, a district or a country, the common people, the people assembled, the multitude, the rabble. Nineveh in Aramaic is fish. There are nine occurrences of the word Nineveh in the book of Jonah. This last eclipse will be the ninth total solar eclipse since 1776 when America was established.
the rare emergence of two broods of cicadas is in Illinois and overlaps. On 8th of April 2024 in Williamstown, Kentucky, the arc will experience 98% of magnitude. Closed in darkness in the middle of the day, seven days prior to this, a film that was released in theaters for two days only will be extended to a third day so that it can be seen nationwide on 1 April. It's called The Ark and the Darkness. In the center of the X is a little place called Rapture, Indiana. There is no other place like this on the entire planet Earth. Population of Rapture is one. David Tanner, an atheist. David in Hebrew means beloved. Tanner looked upon as an undesirable occupation full of unpleasant odors and unattractive sights. I am the Aleph and the Taf, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Revelation 22, verse 13 to 14. All these things scream that this is a sign. There is no way there can be so many coincidences at all. It is mathematically impossible. We, with our best minds and science and everything, could not put something like this together so perfectly. There is a God. And he created the heavens, the signs, the stars, the moon, the sun, everything for signs and warnings and to show us what is coming and what is lying ahead. And he has been doing it since the beginning of creation all the way through to now. And he is busy showing us the whole time and go through this again, pause, go through every point, look at every single thing and then you try convince yourself. These are all just fanatical coincidences. And there is so much more that I haven't even mentioned here. So be excited. Keep looking up. Why? Because Jesus is coming soon. God bless and shalom.